Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your extremely handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to learn about cube notation as well as finger tricks and what finger tricks are. And then I'm going to show you a couple of finger tricks that are really important, which are called the sexy move and the reverse sexy. At this point, you are, or uh, should be, an expert in solving the bottom layer of the cube, and you should just be starting solving the second layer. It's okay if you're not yet confident in solving the second layer. You can watch this video uh, if you have already mastered the bottom layer. If you haven't mastered the bottom layer, I would wait to watch this video but you can watch it before you fully master this, the second layer. Up to this point, our solving has been intuitive. Intuitive means that you are looking at the cube and you're thinking about how can I move the pieces? Where do I need to move the pieces in order to get them where they belong? In the next step, when we focus on the top layer, because you know the bottom layer, the second layer, that's mostly done intuitively. But the top layer is going to require you to learn what are called algorithms. And in order to do these algorithms, we need to have a common language so that we can communicate together on how to do the algorithms. Think of it as kind of like sheet music. When you play a musical instrument, the composer writes the songs down on sheet music. And those notes tell you what you are supposed to do, what keys to play on the piano or on a trumpet, what uh, buttons to push, etc. So we need a similar type of language with cubing, and you're going to learn that now. That language is called cube notation. We talked about in our first video the sides of a cube, that there's a bottom, which most people consider to be the white side. There's a top, which would be the opposite of the white, so that would be yellow. And then depending on how you're holding it, it's going to change. But there's a right side, there's a left side, there's a front and there's a back. So in cube notation, we refer to the right side with an R, just a letter R, capital R. We refer to the left side with a capital L. We refer to the back side, the side right here, with a capital B. We refer to the front with a capital F. And then the top, we actually don't call it top, we call it up. So we refer to it with a letter U. And then the bottom, we refer to with a capital letter D for down. Okay, so up and down. And up is almost always going to be yellow, down is almost always going to be white. But right and left will change depending on which way you're holding the cube. And that's really irrelevant. That doesn't really matter because you'll be doing cube rotations as you solve. That cube rotation is when you move the cube in your hands during a solve. So if I see in cube notation a capital letter R, that tells me to turn the right side. But here's the deal. The right side turns two different directions, right? So which direction do I turn it? Do I turn it back or do I turn it front, you know, forward? In order to make cube notation work, we need a way to distinguish between the two directions. 
The way we do that is with what we call prime. And prime is signified like this with a, uh, what do you call that little thing, an apostrophe? Okay, the little line after the R, that means prime. If there is no apostrophe, then I'm going to turn the cube clockwise. So think of a, imagine a clock, imagine the hands of a clock. So here's the middle of the clock and the numbers of the clock, you know, there's a one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a seven and eight and a nine and a 10, 11 and a 12. Okay, so imagine there's a clock there and clockwise would be this way because that's the direction that the hands of the clock go. So if it's just the letter by itself, like R, because I'm holding the, this on the right side, I turned it so you could see, but this is on the right side. This would be R, okay? One turn, well, I just did several, but one turn, that would be R. So if I see that in an algorithm, that capital letter R, I'm just gonna turn it one time to the right, or the right side, rather, one time clockwise. If I see an R prime, that means I turn it one turn counterclockwise, the reverse direction of a clock. Okay, so this is R, this is R prime. Okay, same thing. This is L, this is L prime. Okay, this is U, and this is U prime. And then I've got, on the bottom, I've got D, and I've got D prime. Okay, I've got F, and I've got F prime. And then in the back, I've got B, and I've got B prime. Okay, so this is gonna become really, really important as we work on solving the final top layer. Because again, bottom two layers are solved intuitively, but the top layer, that's not to say there aren't algorithms. There are algorithms for the bottom two layers, and a lot of people learn those, and actually it comes in handy. But the way we're solving right now with basic method, beginner's method, the bottom two layers are solved intuitively, whereas the top layer is gonna require you to learn uh, a couple of algorithms in order to solve it. Now that you understand cube notation, and if you don't, if you feel a little bit uncomfortable with cube notation, that's okay. Like anything else, it takes a little bit of time to sink into your brain. Go back and rewind and watch it again a few times until it sinks in. But now I wanna teach you some finger tricks, like this, for example. Okay, finger tricks are important in that they build muscle memory. They're also just fun, okay? Earlier I talked about how the uh, cube is the greatest fidget toy of all time, and so you can do the same thing thing on this side. It's hard to do it reaching over my computer. It's a little bit awkward, but uh, finger tricks teach you muscle memory, but they also, uh, you can use them to shuffle your cube. It's just good practice. It's something to do while you're sitting on the couch, bored, because, you know, remember, you're carrying your cube with you everywhere, so you can annoy your family, okay? Uh, this one that I just did, is called the sexy move, which as I know is a little bit of a silly name. It was uh, named by a famous speed cuber because he thought it just looks so cool and it kind of does, you gotta admit, to do it over and over again because the cube just keeps cycling through uh, solved and unsolved every, uh, as you go through it repeatedly, it's gonna, it's gonna go solved and unsolved over and over again. Uh, so. In order to do the sexy move, you are going to need an algorithm. Okay, I'm going to teach you the sexy move by using cube notation that you just learned. So the sexy move is R U R prime U prime. So if you've got your cube, 
I would do this with me. Okay, just hold your cube in your hand. Doesn't really matter what sides are facing, you know, which way. Although I would get in the habit of holding white on the bottom, yellow on the top, but everything else doesn't really matter. Mine is solved. Yours won't be because you haven't gotten that far yet. And that's okay. We'll get there. Okay, so it's okay that yours isn't solved right now. You're going to go R, U, R prime, U prime. 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 Okay, now I did go a little bit fast there. And if you weren't able to follow through the whole time, I know that's, you know, that's on me. I went a little bit too fast, but I'll go slow, slow this time. R, U, R prime, U prime. R, U, R prime, U prime. Okay, but you should practice over and over and over and over until you can get really fast. And the only way you're going to get really fast is through lots of what? What am I going to say? Lots of practice, right? You're driving your family crazy by doing all this practice. Once you do this side, the right side, go ahead and do it on the left side as well. It's the exact same thing, except we're doing instead of, because we're on the other side. So it's uh, going to be, we're going to start with the primes first. L prime, U prime, L, U. L prime, U prime, L, U. L prime, U prime, L, U. L prime, U prime. So it's the same exact algorithm, but because we're on the other side, we're starting with the primes first. Okay. So practice it on the right and the left. You'll be slow at first, and that's okay. You'll get faster over time. The last finger trick I'm going to teach you right now is called reverse sexy because it's the sexy move but in reverse well it's sort of in reverse uh, the part that's in reverse is i'm gonna i'm gonna flip uh u and r instead of doing r first i'm gonna do u first but i'm still doing on the right side i'm still doing uh the regular clockwise before i do the counterclockwise the reason that I'm teaching you reverse sexy is because this is going to be important actually later uh, in this course. You're going to use reverse sexy uh, when we do, and I'm going to teach you an algorithm to get uh, the yellow cross. And you're going to need to know this particular finger trick. Okay, so it is U, R, U prime, R prime, U 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 R, U prime, R prime. And notice it goes back just like sexy, reverse sexy works the same way. So practice that. U R, U prime, R prime, U R, U prime, R prime. And you want to get fairly fast at this one as well because you're going to use it. Even as you move on to advanced method, this is a finger trick that you will use quite frequently. It's used in a lot of different algorithms or variations of it are used. So too is sexy move used in a lot of algorithms. Okay. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website 
which is Handsome Science Teacher, because I mean, look at this face, HandsomeScienceTeacher.com, where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos, because well, you already have access to those, right? They're free. But also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me, where we where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.